And Joshua, the son of Anun, Moses' minister, sent out of Shittim two recon scouts, who had quite an adventure of it, which for some reason never made it into the Lord's holy book, but would have been quite a novel if a fantasy adventure author would have told the story. The two scouts, who for some reason were not named in the biblical account, were vitally important in this video, so I am going to tell you a little bit something about them. The first was named Barrett, a large, quiet black man who was married and had two children which an unfortunate industrial accident left his arm amputated, and in its place a Gatling gun, which could be interchanged with a variety of different tools to meet the unique requirements of his mission. His partner was Cloud, who was a highly decorated war veteran of considerable responsibility due to his many years of combat service, even though he was barely 16 years old. He had spiky blonde hair, which did stick out three cubits above his head, and an oversized gun sword on his back, which did stick out even further. His girlfriend was the lovely heiress, who will unfortunately die before the end of the story, which only serves to add to Cloud's overwhelming angst. And Minister Joshua said unto them, Go, view the land, even Jericho. Go henceforth ten miles due west from our camp, and come up to the river Jordan. For the river in the most expeditious manner possible, but do not tell anyone back at our camp how you did it, or how the entire army is to safely cross the river a few days from now. From there, go five more miles into the gates of the city of Jericho. Once there, walk the length and breadth of the city, discreetly find out all the secret entrances, until such time as Mr. Sulu catches you, and does suddenly drag you even unto a small windowless shack, and does certain things to you. Oh, my. And John Wayne will turn into the combat correspondent embedded with a special forces unit and justify everything that George Decay is now doing unto you in that windowless supply shed and how this will protect the other Green Berets. Oh, my. And Minister Joshua said unto them, And whatever you do, do not draw attention to yourself. So Barrett and Cloud set off on their little adventure, which for some reason seems to be missing. And it was told the king of Jericho, who for some reason was not important enough to be named, even though the prostitute was, saying, A thousand pardons to your most royal yet nameless majesty. But it is about time this video finally proceeded to verse 2. Behold, there came men hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. One was a black man with a gatling gun on his arm, and the other a brooding teenage war veteran with an oversized gun sword. And he who should not be named answered and said, Unto those who was speaking to who shall also not be named, Hark, for I care not for the worship of the God who did not know the name of the narrator of the original, literally, Genesis series. For truly an omniscient God would know that his name is Paul C. Hartley, not Paul Chartley, as was frequently stated in the previous video. For this is just as silly as the sign on the building at the military base at Panmunjom, which reads, out in front of them all. Yet the M in them is closer to the A than to the E, so that it looks like it reads out in front of the mall, which often causes groups of teenagers to stand in front of the gift shop, calling their mothers on their cell phones to come and pick them up out in front of the mall. And the king of Jericho, who shall not be named, sent to Rahab the prostitute, who shall be named, saying, Bring forth the men that have come to thee, which are entered into thine house, so we may know them. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong story. Bring them out, so we may publicly execute them for espionage, unless Harrison Ford does show up, even hereunto, to stop the execution in a daring but carefully choreographed rescue scene. For they be come to search out all the country, and apparently I be speaking Ebonics, yo. And the woman took the two men and hid them, taking care to hide Cloud's massive hairdo and even more massive gun sword. And at that point she lied unto the king who should not be named, even though at this point she realized that she was bearing false witness. And she said thus, 
There came in unto me one big black man with a gatling gun on his arm and a brooding teenage war veteran, but I wist not whence they were, which in English means, I don't know where they came from. And it came to pass about the time of the shooting of the gate, which is about 10 o'clock p.m., so they could stop people from watching a movie at the city theater if they had not paid for a ticket. When it was dark, that the men went out, whither they went, I would not, which in English means, where they went to, I don't have a fracking clue. Pursue after them quickly, for you shall overtake them. So a group of warriors stood in formation, prepared to follow whatever orders were given to them. The group consisted of three soldiers in matching armor, a skinny white cat riding a larger gray mechanical cat, a small child who had more magical power than any person in the city of Jericho, a professor who happened to be an electrical mechanical genius, and a level 75 blood elf retribution paladin who wandered into the wrong video game. Their commander was a breathtakingly beautiful woman wearing a tiny black patent leather bikini, oh my, and an oversized shotgun slung over her shoulder. And she thought for a moment and realized that she remembered who Cloud was, for she used to be his drill sergeant. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house, and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof, which hid Cloud's silly hairdo and gunsword quite nicely. But behold, Barrett complained that it was itchy, and Cloud told him to shut the hell up, or they would be caught, for he was happy that in this scene he would not have to put on a dress and try to seduce the local corrupt businessman. And the men pursued after them all the way unto Jordan, unto the fords which Baird and Cloud used to cross the river, but did not think to post a large army of heavily armed guards to wait for the Israeli army which would be marching by this way about three days from now, as they did not think a large army could cross the river at this point. And as soon as they which pursued after them had gone out, as they were not named either, they shut the gates. After all, they were suspicious of the group of teenagers who were standing outside of the gates on their cell phones, claiming they were waiting for their parents to pick them up, out in front of the mall. And she went back to her house and found Barrett and Cloud still up on the roof, wondering what all the hubbub was about down on the street. She brought them down unto her kitchen, wondering all the time why neither of the two asked her how much and thought that maybe she was losing her touch. For Barrett just sat there looking at a photograph of Tifa, while Cloud just sat there. He just... sat there. What followed then was a cutscene, one of the type which causes the gamer to go grab a sandwich, for they did not wish to sit there listening to Rahab the harlot summarize the significant events that had previously occurred in the Torah. Indeed, Barrett just laid back using his gatling gun as a makeshift pillow because he's just that badass. But Cloud got up and walked onto a large black and gold chest that happened to be in Rahab's living room, and used the golden key he stole from a boss in the dungeon in the previously deleted scene. Cloud thought about what kind of treasure would be in this chest. Surely it must be a piece of plate armor, or perhaps a glass orb that he would henceforth add to the hilt of his gunsword, in order to add to it some magical properties. But to his dismay, it was but a phoenix down, a miraculous potion that could bring any member of his party back to life after such time as they had died, having their hit points reduced to zero. But Cloud did not take this phoenix down with him at this point, as he had already had enough of them in his inventory. And Rahab proceeded with her speech, which was of such wonderful melodramatic quality that she would win an Academy Award, or perhaps even a Webby. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you this land, that your terror has fallen upon us, and all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when he came out of Egypt, and what he did to the two kings of the Amorites, which were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Now therefore I pray you swear unto me by the Lord, since I showed you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house, and give me a true token, that ye shall save alive my father, my mother, my brethren, and my sisters, and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. 
And the men answered her, Our lives for yours, if ye utter not this our business. And it shall be, when the Lord hath given us this land, that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And Barrett took the Gatling gun from off his arm and installed a zip-line attachment, which he then did fire into a large tree in the field over yonder, and reinstalled the gun. Then Cloud, without saying nary a word, slid down the length of the line and jumped down to the ground at the bottom of the tree. He then did tap his foot, waiting for Barrett, who was now taking a slow, sweet time, talking to a beautiful woman. And she said unto them, once again being far too overdramatic, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days, until the pursuers be returned. And afterward, may you go your way. And Barrett answered back, immediately attempting to renege upon their agreement, we shall be blameless of this thine oath, which you have made us swear, as the contract was not notarized, and besides thou hast not read the fine print. Article 3, in nearly microscopic letters at the bottom of the page, says even here in two, Behold, when we come into this land, you shall bind this line of scarlet thread, formed into a letter A, as to denote thine profession, in the window which thou didst let us down by. For lo, three days from now we shall hence have forgotten which window is yours, and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household, and Gandalf the Grey, and your two dogs Pogo and President, and the neighborhood alley cat, and your donkey, and for some reason a man in a green silk cape, home unto thee. And it shall be that whoever shall go out of the doors of the house into the street, not even to answer the door unto the pizza delivery man, not even to buy an ice cream cone, not even to speak unto the vacuum cleaner salesman, his blood shall be upon its head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, even customers wanting to know how much, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. And if thou utter this our business, even to your neighbor Marge, who walks over to us while you are having a party, what with all these people here unto in her house gathered around thine donkey, and the bright red ribbon tied around thy window, then we shall be quit of thine oath, which thou hast made us to swear. And she said, once again being far too melodramatic, According to your words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed, and Barrett, sliding down the zip line, kept screaming, Get some! Get some! as he fired off about a thousand rounds of ammunition at the people at the ground below him. And Cloud did henceforth facepalm himself, as they were not supposed to draw attention to themselves. And Rahab the harlot bound the scarlet letter in the window, and she did facepalm herself as well. And they went and came into the mountain and abode there three days until the pursuers were returned. And the pursuers sought them throughout all the way and found them not, though the drill sergeant had the suspicion that the tiny cat riding the mechanical device was not really trying very hard to find them. And Barrett and Cloud began the overnight journey back to the Israeli camp at Shittim. All the way back they So the two men, Barrett and Cloud the Recon Scouts, returned and descended from the mountain and passed over, and came to Joshua the son of Anun, and told him all things that befell them, conveniently leaving out the bit about the location of the Phoenix Down in the locked treasure chest, and the most convenient location for the army to ford the river. And they said to Minister Joshua, Surely the Lord has delivered into our hands all the land. For even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us, for we stink to high heaven, because we have not bathed for three months. And Tifa and Eris ran out of their tents to meet Barad and Cloud, but they did not hold their noses, for at this point they were used to the stench wafting from yonder direction. As the women cried upon their broad, muscularly shoulders, Cloud discreetly looked into the bear's eyes as they silently vowed not to tell their loved ones that they had spent the night in the home of a prostitute, and indeed how much she had charged them. And the teenagers were still standing outside of the gates of the city of Jericho, waiting for the parents to pick them up out in front of the mall. And Paul C. Hartley did facepalm himself. Up to the wall from Jericho, 